Lemuria by TMG. This is a game that came out recently by TMG. It is a bilingual edition, English and Japanese, so you may expect all text on the components to be in both languages, and the art clearly has been designed with an eye to the Japanese market in, in, in mind, as you will see. Three to four players, so it's a fairly small range of players, which is also always a little bit of a limitation. If a game plays with two, you're just going to have more opportunities this to bring it to the table. It is a worker placement game where you send your workers out to produce resources and you spend those resources to build buildings and score points. Very Euro, very Euro in essence. It has an unusual, not unprecedented, but unusual idea when it comes to how resources are produced, which is uh, through a mobile element that rotates during the game and so changes the way the resources are produced and allocated. But let me show you how the game works. This is a general look at the board of the game. It looks a little busy at first, but in truth there aren't many playable areas and once you start playing and you know what everybody, what everybody is doing and where everything is, the playable areas stand out from the background quite easily. Moving a little closer, here we have an area where you will place building cards. You have a deck of building cards that you shuffle at the beginning of the game and you place five buildings there randomly. The point of the game is to build buildings that will score you points. Also, there are citizen cards. You will start with some of them, you will acquire them during the game, and once you have buildings, you can send the citizens to live in them. You can also uh, place citizens without sending them to the buildings, without getting them to live in the building. But if you do, as you can see, there are two numbers here on the side. These are the victory points that you score if you send a citizen to live in a building which is not of their color, like this is a golden citizen. And this is the number of victory points, which is higher if you send the citizen to inhabit a house of the right or a building of the right color. There's also an effect that activates when you play the card and it's a one-time thing. So if I place this card here in the build of the same color, I'm gonna score three points. If I send this citizen to live here, I only score one point lower number. And why would you send the citizens to live in the wrong place? So say not the most suitable place because you score points for each inhabited building during the game. So there's still value even in sending them when it's not the perfect spot. Each turn starts with uh, uh, players checking majority in these four areas. Basically, each time that you build a building by buying a card, you will place one of your tokens in one of these areas. The merchant area, religious area, political area, and farm area. Incidentally, the names of the areas are different on the rulebook. Uh, I think political is called military or something like that. I was a little confusing at first. Suppose that these two players have built merchant buildings, this player has built two, that player has built one, and this player also has built one in this area, and no one else has done so. So at the beginning of each turn you check who has majority in each area, and the person that has majority gets a bonus. Majority in the religious area is three victory points, so that's very valuable. Majority here will give you a discount in the turn when you buy buildings. Merchant area, you collect gold. This is one of the many resources in the game. And here, the farm area, you collect bread, which is the currency that you use to place citizen cards. Citizen cards go in your hand, but in order to play them, you need to spend resources, you need to spend bread. I'm talking about the resources. Uh, here we are, you have wood, bread, gold, uh, papyrus, uh, uh, bricks. Yes, unfortunately they're double-sided, so sometimes you you grab, you grab, uh, say, four, you get four gold, you grab four gold and you put them in your area and then they're like, wait, wait a second, what happened to my gold? Why do I have two bread and two gold? What happened? Uh, because maybe you just, you know, flipped them by mistake. But you have to be careful. Always a little bit annoying when you have double-sided tokens that represent different things, one on each side. So, beginning of the turn, you assign special bonuses. Oh, the game lasts 12 turns, 
and as you can see from the turn track some turns are special these are the festival turns doing a festival turn everybody gets to score their presence in in these areas so they're just more bonuses in those turns so not just the player with majority and then it is time for the players to alternate taking their turn and the first thing that the player who is that the player does is to interact with this area here which is called the altar it's a circular area and it has this uh, uh, round element that rotates during the game starting only however from turn four uh, at the beginning, starting from turn four, each turn you move this element here by one click clockwise. This, this, the altar, the zero, the board is divided in sections that are that are delineated, so circumscribed by the black lines, and each section is divided in two, three, or four areas. Uh, marked by the white lines. So starting from turn four, the beginning of each turn, you also move this by one, and then the first player may spend gold to move it one click further or to move it back where it was. Again, the active player will interact with this using these game elements. They are supposed to be in the little book they describe some sort of a mystical matter that will become different things. I think of them as workers. These farmers or workers good at working plants and these miners or other types of workers that are good at working metals, metals and stone. So you have these four elements, two per type, and when you're the active player, you can either place them on empty spaces in this area here. It has to be an empty space and there is a restriction. Once an area has a, has a type of, of worker, let's call them workers, which can be again mineral or vegetal or plants, you can only place workers or game pieces of the same type. Plants with plants and minerals with minerals. So that's simple as that. When it is your turn to interact with the altar, you can place any and all of your elements from your supply to the to the to the wheel to the altar or or you can harvest that is you can take you can take those not the right piece you can take elements from an area in which you have a presence and the area needs to be to be full. So for example, I can, if I'm blue, I cannot harvest that area, that section, because it has two areas and one is empty, but as a blue player, I could harvest this area. Even as the red player I could harvest that area, although I'm not the one that has majority. So during my turn, instead of placing things there, I can harvest and I simply remove the game pieces from there. I give them to the to the corresponding players, and then these workers or these these things that they just harvested will produce the goods that they're facing on the central wheel, and that corresponds to the type of things that they produce. So if I'm harvesting plants from there, the corresponding plant there is papyrus or whatever it is, old toilet paper, medieval toilet paper. In any case, I produce this and I get a resource of this kind for each for each worker that I have there. So by harvesting plants there, I get two points of old paper, two points of old paper. If I was harvesting, if I was harvesting mineral from that section, then I would get bricks. And suppose I'm yellow, I'm harvesting these things. So now yellow and blue get a brick each. So sometimes you place things there not because they produce what you want right now but because you think that by next turn they will give you the thing the thing that you want. And also you get a sense of what the opponents want and, and you may play with that getting them getting your your uh, workers your tokens in areas that they may want uh, using gold to manipulate the wheel so that they get stuff that they don't need and they do not get the stuff that they are trying to harvest. Also during the game these discs representing generic uh, generic materials will be placed uh, will be placed on the board uh, basically at the end of a turn 
in each area that has a presence but is not full yet, you will add one of these tokens. So you would do that at the end of a turn. There, you would do that at the end of a turn. This would this would not really happen because you would need you need tokens. So you add these generic generic matters. Uh, simply think of them as wild resources. If you are harvesting a certain a certain material, then that counts as one of that material. If I'm harvesting this space here and I'm blue, I'm getting three bricks. Also, if multiple players are in a certain area, the player that is actually harvesting, that is the one that is spending their action to harvest, is gonna get a is going to get a resource for each token that they have there, plus one for each generic marker. So now blue would take three gold. And other players that are there that are benefit from the harvest, but they're not spending their, their resource action to harvest, will get a resource for each token that they have there, plus half half of the generic token. So in this case, red will get two gold. But hey, pretty good, because blue has spent their action to do so. Sounds incredibly complicated, uh, but once you start playing, it really makes sense. It's easy. You just call. You just plant. Uh, I don't know plant uh, vegetation, or you start working to get materials. You send your workers there, and then you or someone will remove them from there, and that is what produces resources. Then you work so hard to get those resources. Uh, it's time to spend them, right? And you spend them. Uh, by uh, playing citizens, again, you need to spend bread for that, and or by building buildings. So the cost to build a certain building is indicated there. For example, to build this, you need two green resources, which is wood, and two red resources, which is, um, which is bricks. This one, you need two papyrus and four bricks, uh, two papyrus, a wood and a brick, and so on and so forth. Pretty, pretty simple. You simply turn in to the bank that combination of resources and you score victory points. Hooray! Now, cards, uh, buildings that are in this area of the, of the offer area are worth extra victory points, as you can see there. And this number on the card source is the number of victory points that you score. So if you build this building right now when it is in this slot, you score 10 points, which is pretty huge. This one gives you an extra 3 points, this slot gives you an extra 1 point. And to build them you have to pay the full price. Buildings on this at the side here, you can build at a discount of a resource. Any one resource, any one resource, any one unit of resource, not any type of resource. Uh, you pay one fewer. For example, I could build this one with four stones and zero wood or with three stones and a wood instead of like one wood and four and four uh, stones. And then you trade sheep for wood and you build the longest road. I know that's another game I got confused. So here you get a discount, here you don't. Uh, unless you have the majority here and that is the advantage of having majority here which is you get a discount even for building in this higher tier. If you spend enough resources to build a certain building, you get the corresponding card, you score victory points, you may be able to send a citizen to live in that building, and also you add one of your tokens again to the corresponding area for majority. Ties in these areas mean that no one gets the advantage. It can be pretty annoying. Uh, it can be pretty tough to break a tie. Also, it may entirely happen that these areas will be full because everybody has placed tokens there, but uh, doesn't mean that you cannot build. You still build buildings. It is just that you cannot add tokens at that point. At the end of a round, when everybody went, you slide down the buildings uh, and then you draw cards from the building deck to replenish, to replenish the offer of buildings so the new buildings will become available. Da, 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 da. Continue like this until the end of turn 12. You do one final round of scoring, and at that point, the player with the highest total is the winner of the game. 
This is not a bad game, but it seems to me it's a game that requires too much work uh, for what it has to offer. If it was a little more streamlined, a little easier to teach, and a little shorter, I'd be fine. Uh, I place my workers or magic materials there, whatever they are, and they produce resources, and I buy stuff with those. Hooray! Um, if it wasn't much more complicated than, say, Splendor or even Minecraft, the card game. I know it sounds like a silly game, but actually it's a pretty good one. I reviewed it a year or two ago. But the idea is that you collect resources to build stuff. There are games that do just that, such as Splendor or Minecraft, the card game. Here you have that extra step, which of course is totally worth it if it brings more fun to the table. But in essence, this idea of putting resources to the table and harvesting them it was not nearly as fun, as engaging, as deep as I thought it would. It brought a little bit of diplomacy to the table because I could say, well, you know, why don't I put two elements there and one material there so that then you can do that thing. At the end of the turn, you're going to get a free uh, generic this there and then next turn we can harvest it, etc, etc, etc. It brought a little bit of that, which was fun. But again, not um, somehow not as engaging as I expected. The game, well, not complicated if you're familiar with uh, with board gaming in general. It is just somewhat hard to teach. I taught it to players that were not regular gamers and they seem to be a little lost at the beginning. After a couple of turns, things started going well and they were able and they were able uh, to play uh, without any problem. I wouldn't even say that there is a learning curve which is particularly steep. It is, it looks hard. That is, there may be cases where you have some very casual gamers and you start teaching it to them and they're gonna be completely confused and so you're gonna have an extra, to take an extra step to reassure them that the game is playable and makes perfect sense. Because in essence, it is pretty simple. Put your resources there or collect them uh, turn the wheel, well, turn the wheel possibly, put down resources, collect them, um, build your buildings at the beginning of a turn, check for majority to see if you have any special effects, and that's pretty much it. But uh, it just seems like all of these elements had great potential, but again, somewhat they, they didn't turn out too much. It's almost like fireworks that seem to going to explode and create a lot of light and beautiful patterns that were doing a little piff, poof, puff here and there. The era majority, I liked it very much in, in games, but it felt pretty bland because actually in most cases, um, either a player takes it and retains it for most of the game, uh, just because building buildings is hard. It takes a lot of planning, a lot of work. If I am lucky and I build a certain building in a certain area right away, I'm the only player with an area there, with a presence there, and I'm gonna get the benefit for a long time. If I put two there, then other people may gang up against me. Um, that is, if an area with five, I have two there, by ganging up, it means that we let somebody else get the other three there uh, and then somebody can take majority from me. But in essence, probably people will want buildings in the air just because it suits their interests. So it's going to be very hard for them to get three. Again, you have to agree you're going to get them all. But why would I let you get all of the green buildings, say, uh, just so that you take majority from somebody else? So, in truth, when one gains an advantage, they are most likely uh, either the player will retain it for all or most of the game, or in the best case scenario, there will be a tie. Again, because people are building their buildings to score points, to get to get uh, citizens to to go and live in those buildings. Um, and so that part of the, of the era majority seemed pretty much like the first player to get there is going to have a huge advantage. Uh, the wheel that turns during the game, that's cute, that's interesting, but it didn't seem to add all that much. Uh, harvesting or sending your workers it seemed to be interesting in terms of timing, but again, in essence, it was like, okay, that's pretty, I see it, I see it, okay. Well, you start the putting metals and plants there, so that restricts my my options. I guess I'm gonna do the same, and next time you're gonna go, go first, and possibly you're gonna harvest, and then I'm gonna benefit from it. But what, uh, what you have to keep in mind here, due to the timing, is that pretty much it will always take two turns from when, uh, we take two turns total. One turn you put down your resources and then the next turn you get something that you can spend. 
pretty much you're gonna get the, you're gonna get to build and to spend stuff almost every other turn and you can do it differently this turn I collect something because I'm harvesting and then next turn I put something down and you are harvesting so I get some stuff um, but in general it's more often than not is every other turn which can feel a little anticlimactic uh, towards the end because at the end you I mean entirely bit of the last turn you almost have nothing that happens because people harvest a lot of stuff the turn uh, the, the turn before last and they build stuff desperately there was a big building you want to go and get it right away and then the last turn you can put your materials on the um, around the wheel but you'll never collect them you'll never harvest them now I go early in the game and now I put those materials you go later in the game you harvest so you also harvest mine and I get some resources but I don't get to spend them because my turn already went so it's a catch-22 either uh, in the last turn you put them down and that's it or even if you get resources it's after your turn and if you got resources earlier then I get something to spend but again when it comes to my moment of interacting with the wheel there is nothing I can do the last turn that was very anticlimactic very uh, disappointing it also reduced the possibility of catching up uh, with the leader and the fact that I like games where you build up a certain engine and it takes you a while before a certain engine pays off but at this point there is a great satisfaction but here again it felt like setting up a situation just to get two or three resources and to buy a small building it felt like a lot of work for what the game had to offer for the entire mechanism and again for something this uh, that relies on such a simple idea I would expect I would want a game that lasts 40, 45 minutes, no more than that. And this game easily lasts over an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, there may be analysis paralysis that may extend the game even longer, and then that is way too much time. Uh, to me, the fact that the game already lasts more than an hour, and and I'm not being pessimistic, even the box here says 100 minutes, and you know that the boxes actually tend to be optimistic, usually they underestimate how long it takes. So this has the, the complexity, uh, the mental work, uh, the time requirement of a much bigger game, which is not per se a bad idea, but unfortunately it also has the time requirement, the complexity, the... the, 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 the the effort that requires of a much better game. I don't have one in mind, but usually when you're games that you invest that time and that energy and that learning, that the learning process uh, to figure out the game, you have games that when you invest that amount of time and resources in, then they're much more rewarding. I know games in the 90 minutes to our range, we have some excellent games out there. They are no more complicated than this one and they just give you more. I mean, it's not a bad game, but in general, I'd say probably if I were to summarize my review in one sentence is too much work for what the game has to offer. It's not it doesn't have anything to offer. I mean, frankly, there are moments where harvesting, uh, I'm interested in harvesting. I'm interested in trying to figure out ways of maximizing my uh, my investment. I want to collect a certain building. There is some interaction in the fact that I'm taking a building that I know you want. Uh, you always have scarcity, uh, which is great. So you always want to do more stuff that you actually can. And yet, and yet, when you put all these things together, it's not a particularly elegant game in terms of, of economy, of you know what, how, what the mechanics the structure the game experience. Uh, it's even a little bit, bit fiddly for what it is. Um, again, it seems to be a game that is bigger than what, bigger, more complicated, longer, more complex than what its core idea uh, should be. Um, it feels a little bit bloated. Again, not just big, but bigger than it should, more complicated and longer than it should. Either were ways of trimming down the game, of making the uh, harvest system, the, the economic system, a little leaner and the possibility that you get to collect uh, somehow almost every turn. 
uh, and so the game doesn't end anticlimatically with a last turn where nobody's getting your resources and if you don't have other resources you don't buy anything either so if there were ways of trimming it down to making it smaller making it faster making it an extended filler 30 40 minutes uh and with more intuitive rules i think this could be a very strong game as is it is a so-and-so game one that i didn't hate uh but i definitely didn't fall in love with either lemuria by tmg